Okay, here we are. Um, serial jobs. Yes. So serial jobs are basically uh, uh, jobs that uh, that are not not interactive. So this is basically the idea. So so basically serial in this ca case means that you run something from beginning to end completely in a in a script. <clears throat> so you don't you you do the whole uh, from beginning to end uh, in in one one go in one script, uh, and this might involve many uh, like separate steps to to do this, or it might be like only one program call. But uh, and also serial in this case means that it's not running parallel, so you're not doing uh, multiple. Well, you're not doing multiple different uh, routes. Uh, you're just mm. going from start like, the script to the end of the script. Yeah, like one script, it, one data set, one submission. Yes. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. I guess is always the starting point to doing anything. You have to submit it once before you can have it do multiple things. Yes. So uh, serial jobs are these like uh, how they are actually written, they are written into these scripts, these slurm scripts, which are in, in reality, they are so simple like shell scripts. So this is why mm -hmm. shell programming is very important for, for using these clusters that you need to be able to tell the machine what you're planning on doing when you're doing these uh, serial jobs. So because everything needs to be in that same script. So the mm -hmm. uh, software module loading uh, going to a certain work directory, such forth. They need to be all written into the same script. So mm -hmm. the uh, you need to be able to tell the computer what to do, and you need to tell it in the language that it understands. And this is the mm -hmm. shell shell language. So basically, yeah. go to this folder, open up this data file, uh, run this program. Mm -hmm. So these kinds of commands you will gi give them uh, yeah. to the computer. So and and. Uh, yeah. Should we sc or scroll down and look at the first job script or? Yes. Yes. Let's, else? let's do that. So here so we go. If we look at this first job script here, uh, you will see that there are, there are a couple of like these special lines, what uh, differentiate this script from a normal uh, SH or shell script. So, so the first line that, uh, can, comes to mind is the is the actual first line, uh, which is this shebang directive. So this tells the the slurm when slurm actually executes this script, it will tell it uh, what program it should use to execute this script. Mm -hmm. You can use other interpreters besides like normal shell programs, mm -hmm. but they are sometimes a bit more complicated yeah. to use. It's like uh, I could so, have Slurm start Python directly, for example. Yes, yes, it, it is possible, but it's usually uh, because you usually need to do some preparatory steps, like loading modules. You need to mm -hmm. do some mm -hmm. uh, some something that involves the shell or or the folders and such forth. Right. Uh, yeah. You usually need to use some shell, and Bash mm -hmm. is the most common one. Right. And yeah. on what we recommend people to use. So basically, the first line you will always have it in your script. Uh, so the first line just tells uh, tells the Slurm that when you are going to run this script, use this uh, use this shell, mm -hmm. use this interpreter. Okay. Uh, this this next lines are are uh, then what is basically the meat of the Slur Slurm script in a sense that. If they are the resource requirements that you will uh, that your job will want, and these are given with these comments uh, to the to the Slurm scheduler, uh, so written this hashtag sbatch, and and uh, and the after that you have some resource requirements. So these are completely the same as previously when we were running with srun. Uh, these commands, and we were giving these requirements via the command line with these command line arguments. These are basically the same thing. So instead of reading them from the command line, 
it will read them from this file and it will read the arguments uh, uh, from these comments. So, so basically these comments are not something that doesn't involve your program, but they are like hints or instructions mm -hmm. to the scheduler that when this uh, script will be run, yeah. uh, what kind of resources should be allocated for this program. Yeah. I can see that the hash is the standard comment character in shell scripts. So as far as the shell knows, these are comments, but I guess Slurm looks at them and processes them before it yes. gets to the shell. Indeed. So, so basically, uh, there are two steps to, to each job submission or, or job when you run a job. First, you submit the job. Uh, so basically, you give it to the scheduler, and the scheduler looks at the job uh, or the shell script, uh, and it will try to determine what are the resources that the job needs. Mm -hmm. So basically, what it does is it, it checks the command line arguments, it checks uh, the defaults, and it also checks the uh, script itself. Mm -hmm. And it will look for these comments. And when it encounters these comments, it will like put a note to them and, and say that, okay, I will need, for example, in this case, five minutes of time, uh, 100 megabytes of memory uh, mm -hmm. per CPU. Uh, and it will notice that, okay, I will put my output to this uh, specific file. Uh, mm -hmm. I will run it in this test debug partition mm -hmm. just to make it run fast. So then yeah. we have this debug partition for running mm -hmm. uh, fast mm -hmm. jobs. Yeah. And then, and, and those are like, it will keep, make a note of them and then it will store them uh, for when the job is actually run. Mm -hmm. And when the job is actually run, when the reservation has been like you uh, given resources, basically uh, you once the script has been read in, the job has been submitted, uh, the resources are uh, uh, like, well, you, you are asking for the resources. Mm -hmm. And when the resources are available, the job will actually run with the allocated resources, and then it will execute whatever comes afterwards. Yeah. Should we try? So it? in this. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, it will take me a few seconds to get ready. So here I am on Triton. Mm, I guess I should change to my work directory, which I will do with this variable. Um, let's make a directory for the project. So let's see. Looking at the file, let's see, how would you like for me to arrange the windows here? Is this good? Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will edit the file hello.sh. Uh, no, I will use nano. Um, hello.sh, okay. And I will copy and paste all of this to here. And now... I think there's a window at the bottom right. So that window probably shows the previous commands that you were running. Right? Yes, this here. Yes. So yeah, just, this shows just for everybody shell history. watching. Yeah. Yes. So anybody watching, uh, those are the commands that Richard just run. Yeah. So it's not a, not there by mistake. So okay. Anything I need to edit here. So I notice there's this output. I guess this says mm -hmm. my username and then the job ID. Yes. So each okay. job will get it get an ID. So yeah. basically it will get uh uh I think you need to put the percent you oh, default. Yes, right. Yeah. So it goes to your work directory. Okay, so in my work directory, my I made something called Kickstart twenty twenty one hello dot job ID dot out is where it will be saved. Yes. Okay, I guess I'll save with control X and click Y and enter and there we go.
let's ls to see what's here. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so so after this has been done, like you have written this kind of a script, mm -hmm. uh, you can submit it with this s batch uh, mm -hmm. function. Uh, this s batch is basically slurm slurm's command that says okay. that okay, uh, submit my task. Yeah. Should I do it? Uh, yeah, I, I think a bit of the shell is uh, hidden behind oh, the, uh, mm, the the font might be too go. large. Yeah, hopefully it will scroll yeah. down and work. I'll try to keep an eye on that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So so basically, there we go. Once we submit the job, we see that uh, the job has we get this job ID and we see that mm. the job has been submitted. Like mm. uh, Richard tried to. Catch mm -hmm. the job actually in the like in the running state by running a Slurm queue afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, but it actually ran so fast that it it, it, yeah. you, it wasn't catched. But but with Slurm history, one can see that it has actually finished. Hmm. So there's a lot here. I'll do Slurm history one day, but still a lot of stuff. What about maybe one hour even one hour. Yeah. Okay, and I so, need a smaller font size here. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it might be. Mm. Ah, but I can't easily make this font smaller. Okay. Or can I? Well, we anyways, we see from the output that the uh, the job has run, and we see these. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we see from here that there is a job ID on the on the left side, and there's a job name. What was mm -hmm. the submission script? Uh, you can also change these if you will, but mm -hmm. but the, by default oh, it's the submission go. script. Yeah, uh, and you will see that there's like these uh, these underlying steps, and these are basically uh, like the Slurm uh, batch script. It will run. The whole script, but it can also run these individual steps. If we look at the, if you reach a show in the yeah. up browser, the the Slurm script, mm -hmm. uh, we, we had the s run statement before the echo. So we see in the output on the history, we see the echo there. So the, the Slurm, uh, when you have an S batch script, you can have these individual S run pieces inside of it. Mm -hmm. And these basically show as individual top steps uh, in, the, in the output, yeah. then uh, in the history output. And so, this is not something you have to do, but sometimes it's very useful to do because, um, well, especially if you're running something like an MPI job that needs to. Uh, well, we will talk about that later, but if mm. it needs information from the Slurm, uh, yeah. it might need the S run. But anyways, if you're running some job which has like, let's say, pre-processing step, uh, then it has an actual calculation step, and then it has some sort of a uh, post-processing step. Yeah, You so might want to have these as like individual steps so you can monitor, for example, mm -hmm. resource users uh, per step basis. So what do you say there's two purposes here? One purpose is to record resource, resource usage separately. And the second somehow makes the parallelism work for MPI programs. Yes. So, okay. so, so for, the, for the main uh, program runs, like if you're running some main, main program, so not necessarily like run, running something like CD to a folder or module mm -hmm. load something. Uh, for these main low main program calls, you should use the S run. So then mm -hmm. it will record. Yeah. Well, it will get the resources it needs, and it will record what were the resource requirements for each individual yeah. uh, step. But I guess something like module load, it's not really necessary. Or no, whatever. no. I guess actually it's module load it wouldn't work at all. But other stuff like mm -hmm. that, like copies or moves, not important. Yes. Unless but your basically copy takes what... several minutes, and then you might want to track it. Okay. Yeah. So where's the output but for basically... the job? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So the output 
we we had in the Slurcom script we had the output statement that describes mm -hmm. where the output was written and Richard changed it a bit uh, with the adding the kickstart folder but mm -hmm. anyways it should be there yeah yeah okay so here I guess if I look at the contents of this file which I can do with cat and I guess that's the job ID that got submitted yes. and it says hello me I'm on node CSL 48. Okay. Yes. And this is the, like, because we use the echo statement in the, uh, in the uh, SBAT script, this is basically mm -hmm. just like a standard output of what happens in the, uh, when the, when the script is running. Mm -hmm. And this brings an important point with the SBAT scripts that uh, the communication, uh, how, how you're monitoring mm -hmm. these scripts is happening via the file system. So basically mm -hmm. you are monitoring the scripts via standard output your, or the output of your code. Mm -hmm. so, so you're not, uh, when you're submitting the code, you will submit it and then you will only get output via uh, either the standard output of the, the program, if it prints some statements, or if it uh, saves some files in the folder that, mm -hmm. that you can then monitor to check what is the output. If I don't, specify, basically, if I don't specify an output yeah. path, what happens? Is there some default? Uh, it will, yes, it will by default create this slurm dash uh, job ID uh, if you are running an array job, it will add the array number and then put an out dot out at the end. So you will get these default outputs uh, if you don't specify the output yourself. Mm -hmm. And and basically, what you usually want to do is in your code add some verbosity or add some normal output so mm -hmm. that you can you can monitor the state of the code what is what is it doing what uh, yeah. like step is it currently running and so forth mm -hmm. uh, like you can monitor it non-interactively so basically mm -hmm. if you are currently running let's say a python script or matlab script and you press play on your uh, ide or development environment mm -hmm. and you you will start running it and then it won't produce any output for uh, two hours or something, mm -hmm. and you're just mm -hmm. monitoring, it, looking at like whether the, it's I finished see. or not. So it's, yeah. It can be really complicated to monitor it in Triton uh, because you won't get, you will only mm -hmm. get the output when whether it finished or whether it didn't finish. And this is not usually what you want to do. You want to do, uh, write something that it, it, the program will give you some hints of what, what, what step it's actually taking at this point, what what kind of mm -hmm. output it's creating and so forth. So, so basically, uh, because you will be working like it, it's basically like a fire and forget type of a mm -hmm. thing where you 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 say the Slurm script yeah. that okay, run this thing and it will tell you that okay, I will run it and you can ask the Slurm whether it's still running it uh, or whether it is completed. But mm -hmm. uh, you will have to have some uh, phone number basically <laughs> to mm -hmm. the to the worker itself. Uh, if you want to get yeah. updates on what the worker is doing. Okay. And yeah. in this case, it's the standard output. Okay, good. So what comes next in our lesson? Should we continue? I think we've covered yes. most of the things here. So uh, this warning yeah, is something so I've seen a lot. Are you going to talk about that? Yes, so so this is uh, yeah, it's good to uh, make a distinction immediate, immediately in your head that uh, you shouldn't use bash to submit submit the jobs, uh, but s batch. So s batch uh, is the um, is the like Slurm takes hold of your script and it will run the script. Bash mm -hmm. means that run it now, basically run the script now. So if you run so bash. Yeah. Hello. Like dot sh like this. Yes. So now we see it looked like it submitted, but it was s run that was submitting. So this was actually yes. submitting as an interactive job, and it says it's me, yes. and I'm running on this login node, and it knows nothing mm. about these other Slurm parameters here. Yes. 
So, so, so the S batch is the is the wrapper that basically like takes the script, uh, reads it reads it to to the Slurm queue, and then uh, runs it somewhere else. And bash is the interpreter that is then used to well run it when it come comes to the actual place where it's supposed to run it. If you just run run a bash and a script, you will uh, get well. You won't get far from the login node. You're actually running on the login node, and that's that's not what you want. So right. remember to use s batch mm -hmm. when you're submitting stuff to the queue. Yeah. Okay. So yes. what else? So we looked at the status with Slurm queue, although there was nothing there because it was done mm. too fast. You might want to put it like a sleep to the code and we can demo it. If you want to do if that. You, we put, okay. Yeah, let's let's do a like a quick demo. What, nano. What? Mm, hello dot sh. Let's add like a sleep. Yeah. Oh. Like we can sleep for one or minute. Or yeah. So yeah. sleep sixty means just do nothing for sixty seconds. Okay. Yes. Control X. So now save enter and i will go ahead and decrease my terminal size because people say it's readable if it's smaller okay so should i submit it yeah let's um, do it so i remember to use s batch and you and will see that the job is submitted we do slurm q and here we see yeah. the job ID, which matches the submitted job ID, um, where it's running, the name, the time, and it's running, and where it's going. There are various things you might see here. So, so quite common if you're running running a like a job that actually has some requirements compared to this small job, you might see a pending in the state mm, mm -hmm. so pending means that it's it's waiting for uh its place in the queue so so right. basically it's waiting for a good resource yeah uh, where it's so going to be put i guess maybe later we can talk about how it prioritizes what's running yes okay let's look uh, at one other other stuff yeah. you might see is these bad constraints, uh, and mm. this means uh, this is an internal thing. It basically means that it's still waiting uh, for correct kind of a node, uh, but that's that's not uh, something to be scared about. Okay, yeah. So let's see what's next. It asks about so let's look at resource parameters. Yeah. But I guess yeah, these are so similar to the interactive job resource parameters. Indeed, they are. So, so the Slurm. Uh, well, you will when you submit a job, you will need to give it some resource parameters. They are the default values set, but uh, you should always set these once you know what mm -hmm. the job actually requires. Right. So the two parameters that you will almost always need to set are the time and the memory requirements, mm -hmm. and. Uh, this, uh, this is important because, uh, well, like Richard said uh, about how it prioritizes the, the jobs, uh, the, the, the job size is calculated basically uh, like the number of CPUs or the number of memory required to, uh, well, number of me uh, amount of memory required uh, times the time uh, requirement. So basically, it will uh, choose this kind of a block uh, block of time, and and then it uh, well, it it will uh, mm -hmm. calculate based on those. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I explained it very uh, very well, yeah. but but basically, what you need to do is to tell the Slurm to to give you a certain block of like resources. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, to do those, you will need to give it a time and a memory constraint. And the memory, yeah. like we talked yesterday, you can go a bit over the memory limit. And there is, mm -hmm. is a, you can go a bit over the time limit as well. Yeah. But if you 
if you go hard over them, it, it will eventually kill your job. Yeah. You know, once I heard this description, you know, it used to be on clusters, every job fit into a rectangle, a certain amount of time and a certain amount of resources, and that's all it needed. But now with, for example, machine learning methods or all these advanced things, the resource usage may vary over time where there's a short time it needs more memory and then it shrinks some, and that makes it a little bit harder to um, adjust the parameters. Yes, so, that's true. Yeah. So, so maybe that's when, something we can talk about later, or is it yes, sort of so, an art? So there's, yeah, so, so, so basically uh, what you should think about these are the ceilings, you know, like how, how big, big how mm -hmm. well, how, how, if you think about like driving a truck uh, through like uh, uh, underneath yeah. a bridge, you're not mm -hmm. going to like say that, okay, if your truck has one place where it's really tall, and, mm. and otherwise it's really, really uh, mm. tiny. You're not going to say that, okay, by average, my truck should be through that route, because <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, the truck will hit the bridge because yeah. there's going to be this huge spike. So what yeah. you should do is in your, similarly in your code, if you have these kinds of spikes of, let's say, memory usage, uh, yeah. you should try to write your code in a way where you don't have a, for example, you don't load the whole data set mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. just to work on a part of the data set mm -hmm. because then you will need em enough memory for the whole data set. Right. So instead, you should write your code in a way where you can only load the part of the, your data set because then you can lower the, yeah. the average height of your or the maximum height of your mm -hmm. job. Uh, so you should really think about uh, your job as, as this, well, basically this truck that's going yeah. uh, that needs to be certain amount wide certain amount of height and you yeah. don't want it to be um so uh, in either way too somehow, small all these things are somehow interrelated and that's what yes. makes the cluster interesting or fun okay so we are at half an hour in let's see what else there is to discuss here so we talked about the resource parameters Monitoring your jobs, I guess we've already sort of looked at. Um, yes, there's there's very uh, many of these tools that you can use in Slurm to to see like detailed information what your code was actually doing, like this S act mm -hmm. that that is underneath. Actually, the Slurm command is just a wrapper mm -hmm. for the S act. Uh, you can see various try other. Uh, well, I don't know if you need to. Yeah. Yeah. Need it because it, it's a huge amount of information there. But what what? But we have many of these like very common uh, things uh, we have uh, put into the Slurm command. So this S act will give you this uh, sometimes pretty complicated uh, mm -hmm. information. Uh, so so we have written this Slurm script so that it will give mm. you information in in a much more manageable pieces. Okay. So and Slurm is an you... alto specific thing. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, you can you can look at it. It's a Perl code written <laughs> years ago, but but it's very good. So we're still using it. Yeah. Uh, so, but if you look a bit below, we have this uh, list of very useful mm -hmm. commands that you might want to use yourself. Okay. So, uh, so the first one, well, the most. Yeah. Interesting ones for you are are probably uh, the Slurm uh, partition, like the Slurm commands that show the state of the whole cluster. So you can mm -hmm. basically see what's happening currently. Uh, so you can plan what you're you're gonna e e see a bit of an expectation of what what's Let's happening in the cluster. So Slurm partitions will show you that, yeah, because we were talking yesterday that the cluster is heterogeneous. So it, mm -hmm. there's multiple different kinds of computers and then it's been split into these partitions uh, based on the what kind of computers they are. Mm -hmm. uh, we have written it in a way the way you don't usually need to reserve any of these partitions mm -hmm. manually. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think about it. You just need to give the resource requirements. Yeah, uh, But you can see it from here that sometimes uh, well, some partitions are full, some partitions are 
uh, allocated. Some partitions have mm. GPUs, some partitions don't. So and that if comes you want to from see like a pro here, yes, or there's allocated, alloc idle, other, and total. So basically, there are some uh, 42 idle uh, nodes in the batch, uh, batch as well, uh, partition, for example. So, so there's plenty of resources to go around currently. OK. But this is something that uh, users don't normally need to look at. Yeah, so, they don't no normally need to. But if you want to look, for I'm... example, like what is the time limit for, uh, let's say, GPU partition, you will see uh, it from here. Okay. Uh, if, or so what are the partition time yeah. limit and GPU says five days. Yes. So, five days, five so days. by default, it's five days. Um, other, well, important command uh, that you probably need is the, well, this isn't necessarily the most important, but uh, one of the important commands is slurm features that's somehow missing from the list, actually. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Maybe someone this, can add this, it quickly. Yeah, we should okay. add it to this list. So this list tells you what uh, what available types of machines there are available. So uh, maybe you can make the font a bit smaller. I think I can't. This is okay. this terminal has well, only a certain fixed things. But yeah. Well, if you run it in Triton, you will see for yourself that you can see uh, the, the with this command what kind of like computers we have. So if your code, like yesterday, there was a question of of in uh, in if you try to run TensorFlow on Kosh, you will get these AVX errors because mm. like the Kosh mm. machine doesn't have a, like the auto shell server where you shouldn't run necessarily TensorFlow. Uh, it doesn't have AVX2 instructions. Mm -hmm. So from here, you can see that some of the machines, the Ivy mm. Bridge machines, they miss the AVX instructions. And AVX so let's say is, you want... AVX is a processor this, f feature or yes, processor, they are, it's like this, hardware thing? Yes, it's this uh, uh, vector vector instruction so mm -hmm. so you will he here see that that some of these features are yeah. uh, available on some machines some mm -hmm. gpu cards are available on some machines and some yeah. aren't okay but okay so so let's uh, see we should probably work towards the exercises what else is important i think all these commands people can read if they need to yeah, there's basically there's plenty lots of, of different ways to get information about the system. Yes, the most common that you use are the slurm q, slurm history, and the s batch. <laughs> like those are ninety percent of what you will do anyway. Like uh, you will use s batch to submit a job. You will use slurm q to look what's happening in the queue. Mm -hmm. And then you will use Slurm history to check what was the output. And that's mm -hmm. like 90% uh, of your use will be that. Uh, yeah. But you should know that there are plenty of other uh, tools to see more information about your jobs, more information about your... Yeah. Um, uh, one thing, well, we will uh, actually, we'll, we can look at it later, the SF command. But, but now we probably should do the exercises or yeah. do some exercises. Okay. So I guess we can see what else is on the page. We already talked about partition sum. And like Simo said, I think for most users, we don't like. So on some clusters, you have to care about what partition you're submitting to. But on Triton, it's mostly automatic. So just say what you need, and it will run somewhere, which is a nice little feature. OK, full reference is just more lists of commands and stuff. So, yes, exercises. So I guess we will break up into the Zoom breakout rooms for doing the exercises. Um, so how should we do this? Um, I think we should probably have, have like, a, I don't know, at least 15, 20 minutes to run the exercises because these are like the meat of the cluster, really. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you should get a hang of how to write these uh, SBAT scripts uh, yeah. and how to how to do it. Mm -hmm. And after that, I think we should demo a few of these exercises yeah. here. Okay. Uh, sort of. 
So maybe we can have Easier. some time in the Zoom breakout room for questions, but then we can come back shortly to actually um, do the exercises together here. Yes. I guess we can go to a short break. You can discuss in the Zoom room, and then us instructors will talk with the Zoom host and decide what to do. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. So there are how many exercises here? One, two, three, four, five. And how many should people try to do? I think... Um, do you think we should give a think, lot of time uh, here because it's the first one and people can really, hmm. like... Like, if people can do we... these, then everything else will be relatively straightforward. Yes. Should we give maybe 15 yes, I, minutes I... for independent work and then come and demo it together? Yeah. So five, two, one, or... Okay, yeah. Should we have 15 minutes to demo and then 10 minutes for break and then continue? Yes. Okay, yeah. And please, so we're sort of combining the uh, self-working time with the break time, but don't forget to actually take the break. And we will resume at 1.05. Does that sound good? Okay. Great. So see you then. In HackMD, it will clearly say what the exercises are.